right, now I'd like to introduce our moderator for the Building Technology Panel. That's Irvi Bondari, partner, Crush Industries. Thank you. So, how many of you guys have a, who does not have a smartphone? Okay, I wouldn't think so. How many of you guys control things in your home with your applications, like a Nest or things like that, right? All of us. How many of you guys in your commercial real estate buildings have systems like that? Or would use systems like that? Not a lot of people. And that's kind of what we're talking about today is how technology is affecting and what technologies need to be put into commercial real estate buildings um, so that as changing, as, as culture's changing, as people are changing how they live, work, and play, we have the technologies needed to and analyze, to connect, to change things. So I'm gonna, introduce our, gonna get our panelists to come up, if we can have all four of our panelists come up. Our panelists are gonna kind of talk about how these, how, the technology is cha how these technology changes are affecting businesses, what tenant services are being adopted, and what are some of them that we're anticipating coming soon. So um, I'll start with Andrew, and if you could give a 30 second pitch of who you are and why this topic is relevant to you. Sure, it's been a little while since I pitched myself, but my name is Andrew Zussman. I'm the head of product at Skyrise, the Skyrise app. So we're a tenant engagement platform that enables better communication and concierge services for office buildings worldwide. Cool. Um, my name is Chad Cook. I'm the founder of Quadrant Investment Properties, who's the owner of this building. Uh, we have just started a $20 million renovation. Uh, the rendering fly through you just saw is our, what our plan is. Um, our focus is space like this, where we can find an older building and redevelop it into something more applicable to tenants like all of you. Uh, my name is David Beanfield. I'm with a company called Duello. I'm one of the co-founders. Um, the company provides a multifamily platform for adopting smart home technology in apartment communities and then monetizing that. Um, it's been operating in that space, multifamily and home automation for a couple of years now and excited to be on the panel. Uh, and my name is Dennis Smolik and I am the CEO and founder of Roam Directories. Roam is a, a, a tool um, and a platform for interactive experiences in public spaces. Um, we really feel that um, commercial real estate could use a, a big boost in technology that you see both from the consumer side as tenants and visitors, but also, uh, as you can see with all the services here, there's a big change in, uh, the, in the operation side as well. Uh, this is relevant for us because we think that there's a lot of cool things that are coming out and that we want, we want people to do, and we're trying to convince people and show that they need to make a change. Cool. I'm gonna start the opening question with you, Chad. Um, you have an older building. You guys are redeveloping it. So what are some of the um, building amenities, on-demand services, technologies that you guys are thinking about putting in here? And is it based on what tenants want today? Or are you looking to the future? How are you guys making that decision? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and it's total softball for us to do advertisement, so that's great. Uh, what we focus on in our portfolio is um, generally projects like this that provide, uh, there's a metric called a walkability score. This building actually has the highest walkability score in Uptown, and that's measured by how close you are to how many different amenities, and there's a whole ranking system. So it's already in a good location. Um, we liked it because it's because of the way it looks now. We know how we can make it look differently as an owner or redeveloper. To answer your question, though, on the, on the amenity front, we've got two restaurants in place with Steel here and Matitos. We've got a great space ready for another group. Uh, we'll have a coffee concept that'll open up off the expanded lobby. Obviously, that's important to have on site. Uh, there's a series of roof decks, a larger tenant one up top that will be connected to a tenant lounge and a conference center. So that'll be 10,000 square feet, as well as a, if you saw the suspended glass box in the back of the courtyard, that's another tenant lounge. These are exclusive to the tenants of the building. So in those areas, we're, from the technology side, we're focused on how do we make them as usable as possible for our tenancy? 
which on one level is as simple as making sure the power is run right and you have USB ports and power available. It's also how do we get the most uh, speed capability for our Wi-Fi. And then we're working to figure out how do we make sure you can be in the courtyard on your computer and go all the way into the lobby up to the fifth floor and come up without losing your connection. Just sort of things like that. Uh, we're focusing on a lot of different technologies, but on the right AV equipment uh, that we can bring through. And then from a property sort of owner management perspective, there's a lot of different new technologies that are exciting. Uh, like you could drive into the garage, there's a recognition that it's your car and your air conditioning turns on your space. Um, we're looking at facial recognition software instead of keys and fobs. Wow. So, and all this stuff actually exists today, so it's cool to watch. Some of it's still in beta, but we're testing some of that ourselves. Okay. So, and if you notice Glass Media, in, in the, uh, to give those guys a shout out, they've been great. We've worked with them on a lot, and they're doing a whole line of uh, marketing advertising for us, so we're uh, going to use a lot of their product. So. Great. Um, Andrew? You are actually a technology that can help uh, landlords and building owners add concierge services, things like that. What, what kinds of concierge services or what kind of technologies are you hearing from them that you guys are putting into your technology? Sure, well I think first of all, it's, it's time to get excited in real estate again about what's possible, right? I think that in my dad's generation, you would pack a sack lunch and eat it there. And then my older sister, they had, you know, stuff they could order in on occasion. And now we're at a point where, like, if I want a pizza here in five minutes, it's going to be here on the stage and they're going to deliver it to me. And I think, uh, you know, when we look at what's possible today and what's possible holistically to bring to a wide range of different tenants that are looking for different demands and they have different ideas about what it means to have a connected building, I see it as, as, as our role and as to facilitate that, not, not just to participate in it, but to facilitate that and to bring that level of excitement. And we've partnered with some great companies, um, like Park Hub is one of them that you kind of mentioned of parking a moment ago, but I'll give, you, I'll give you a great example. So we partnered with a company that will let you type in your message online and they will handwrite your message with a fountain pen and wax seal the back of the envelope and send that out for you so that if I meet some lovely person here today that's interested in investing in my company, I can have a, a message out to them handwritten tomorrow, right? And that kind of amenity is something that buildings are, are struggling with because it's difficult to be so dynamic, even though the marketplace or the people in the building are very dynamic, but to maintain that level of that leading edge is really difficult. So being able to partner with some of these great companies and really facilitate that experience is, uh, is what we're doing at Skyrise. Interesting that both Chad and Andrew, um, you guys hit on a really good point, which is the human interaction. Chad, you first talked about the spaces before you talked about the technology. You talk about sending handwritten notes, right? And here we are trying to talk about technology. So, but it's, it's great that you bring it up. So Dennis, I want to talk to you because you said your company does interactive experiences, right? Right. So how is that bringing in the human interaction? Like how is your technology adding on to that same topic? So, you know, we, we all carry with us the most powerful tools ever, you know, that, that we can. Like my iPhone has more computing power than, than uh, something that landed on the moon. But, and we use all these tools and these services and we have these experiences and there's all these standards out there, you know, like the Google material design standards, web design standards, all these things. And the way that technology works and what we've come to expect from our tablet apps and our uh, regular interfaces, the fact about he's talked about the pizza that you get in five minutes, well, then it also tells you where it is and it's going to send you a text notification and how you feel with that. Well, when you walk into a public space of any kind, you know, if you walk into a retail store, you usually put your phone away because this is your, your time to experience the things there. I, I can't see how this jacket feels on Amazon, right? So when someone walks into a, a, a building of ours um, that, we, that we work with, we have essentially a giant iPad on the wall or a giant tablet that you're used to. You don't have to sit and try to figure out what that experience is. You touch tabs, you interface with different services and things like that. So, you know, we actually are working with um, with, with Skyrise down there to figure out how to bring their kind of platform mm -hmm. into our application or to, yeah. you know, Chad actually has a lot of his properties 
run on our non-touch and our, and our platforms like that. I believe bring, we were the first, right? You were the first one for our non-touch products. Um, so how do we provide information and news and things like that? And then to be able to evolve as Chad adds services like, you know, maybe he adds a view of the space or a sky rise or, you know, some of these other types of tools. Can us as a technology and a platform be that front face? You know, we do digital signage and interactive and it allows us to interface with the technology that you're using, so. Cool. And then David, do you think what you're providing to the multifamily, um, so for the multifamily buildings of allowing landlords to give them a service that allows them to lock their doors through technology and all that kind of stuff. Do you think that will actually create a more closer human interaction between tenants and their buildings because they're providing technology that is more future for forward? Yeah, can you hear me okay, is this on? Yeah. Um, I think that's, the answer is yes, uh, and here's why. So everything that's being talked about up here, um, it's, it's fantastic, it's phenomenal, it's exciting to see where this is moving, um, but it's all, it's all about making the dynamic between hum, different human relationships more, more effective or more interesting or more, more useful. Uh, the angle that we're coming at it from is making the physical world around you more useful. So you can actually start to build, uh, build a, a relationship is maybe a strong word, but build a relationship with the physical objects within your, within your apartment, so you know you know your lights and your lights know you. You know your locks and your locks know you. You know your, your thermostat and your thermostat knows you. Knows when you like to be comfortable and what that looks like and when you're there and when you're not. Um, and I think that's the future groundswell from the bottom that's gonna be coming up is buildings are coming to life through the, the accessibility and um, the advance of sensory, uh, our sensors. And I think that, that platform is really powerful for for both residents and property managers and giving them a whole new set of data, ultimately a whole new experience and creating a whole new layer of value that previously has never existed. And it, it, again, it's really exciting time to be in the industry. So as we go forward, what, do you, what, do you, what are specific technologies that you think business owners and landlords are gonna compete against each other to bring in tenants? right, in commercial real estate. What are the ones that are critical that people need to have today? Well, I'll just, uh, is that to me? Anyone, I'll take it. anybody. Okay. Uh, it's interesting, the way that we, so the backstory on Duello is, I was in San Francisco, um, my, I was in the enterprise software space, seeing a lot of cool stuff being pushed, the envelope being pushed like crazy in terms of social and mobile and how consumer, large consumer companies are adopting those to better engage residents. Flip side, my, my business partner was operating in the multifamily space and seeing how antiquated oftentimes the resident engagement is there. And we had no, didn't know exactly what would materialize, but we saw a technology gap and an opportunity. So we went out to the largest property management groups and property owners in the United States, all over the Bay Area and nationally, and said, what, what do you want to see that's gonna set you apart. And all these guys are saying, we don't have any additional square footage to work with. We already have our traditional amenities in place. We've got pools, fitness centers, clubhouses. We need a layer of technology that is, that's going to be a differentiating factor. Not cost be damned, like that's an important component, but, but something that, that would be a differentiating factor. And we got into home automation because home automation is what they wanted to see. Mm -hmm. um, we were pulled in that direction because of what at least the larger players were, were looking at and didn't have access to. So I think um, they're looking for, a, as far as we could tell, digital amenities that they can layer on top without adding additional square footage that really enhance the experience and start to build a relationship with the physical objects in the building. I mean, you're seeing the digital amenities in the hospitality and in the, in the residential. So what about commercial real estate? Do, do, do they do landlords want to control such large spaces that way and give their employees the ability to control, I mean, obviously there's technology that can control lights and stuff on timings and stuff like that. But where is it going with commercial real estate? Because I feel like it's still not there. And is that because the technology is not there or is it because real, commercial real estate doesn't want it? Uh, I think there, if you look in commercial real estate, there's a lot of um, older generation owners that aren't frankly focused on it for one. I believe the technology is 
some is there and more is coming all the time and Skyrise is a great example um, of a great new technology that will absolutely change the way tenants are able to communicate with landlords, the way landlords can track data of their tenants and that's like as an owner personally our biggest concern is always how do we get feedback from our tenants not just the office manager who is the one person you send the email to about announcements but how do we really get the underlying good and bad news from these tenants so that we can make sure we're um, getting our program around them so I think that the technology is making its way here for sure and we'll continue to yeah and I think I think to just uh, kind of expand on that I think Chad's point is really that you need to have a level of transparency. Um, you know, what Chad's doing with the Centrum and, and bringing that kind of connectivity from place to place is something that's f fantastic, it sets you apart. But at the same time, you have to communicate that you are setting yourself apart to not only the CEOs of the companies and the tenants that are renting space in the building, but to each of the individual employees. So if a new employee is hired and begins working at the Centrum, they need the opportunity to say, hey, look at all this great stuff that's available to me. And what we've seen over time is that the that it used to have a point of view, or the CEO and the CIO, or you know CFO, or you know the really the ones that were joining the tours of the buildings. But that today you also have the HR manager, right? Because you want to be able to attract the best talent you can. And one way you attract talent is by saying, "Hey, look, look at all this great stuff that's going to be available to your your potential employees, right? That are going to grow your company and and you know make your company a better place." So I think that level of transparency. Is something that you know the those of us you know here that in the technology side and also you know from the landlord side are looking to bring to the tenant experience. You know, so. And I think I think that goes to a point too where I, or I've talked to you about this is you know with with real estate technology I see there's two types of, of, of industries that we're in. You have your perception, which is how people view both the space and how their own clients view them within your space, which it goes to you know uh, both employee satisfaction as well as you know their own clients. But then you also have your operational things, things like being able to pay your rent, to control your lights, to have security on your doors. And those things aren't as sexy. You know, you're not going to put in your marketing exactly. tools that we've got security access and X Y Z. You know, those those are things that people are starting to come as as um, a part of what they expect or uh, and things like that. You know. It's, it's hard to quantify some of the things with, as far as it goes with perception like that. You know, I, I think for, for me, like I come from a co-working space. I work at Common Desk here in Deep Element. And as uh, a co-working space, the amenities that I'm provided, I have, I can, I can get a conference room whenever I want. I've got kitchens, I've got tools, I've got all these cool things within that. But as my company grows, my fear into moving into what, you know, what quote unquote traditional real estate is, well, what am I going to lose? Well, if I go to your building and I can't talk to any other company, like, well, I, I love being able to talk to a, sh a chef or an author or someone else and be able to, to meet with them and, and yeah. have a, a conversation with these other people. If I can't talk with them or if I can't say, hey, uh, you know, there's, there's a happy hour event mm -hmm. going on down here or what's going on or can someone help me X, Y, Z or whatever. I feel the loss of, number one, I think community, like, you know, Nick Clark, our original co-founder, he's very big on driving community within the space. I think that's something that technology needs to continue to improve upon. But, you know, that's the challenge. You ask what's coming next. For perception, I think that, you know, you have cool technology as the cost comes down. You, you know, you've got digital signage like us, you've got video walls, you've got cool interactive things. Then you've got usability too. Mm -hmm. You know, CBRE has, a, has cool tools at their office with their door plates for their uh, to be able to rent a room uh, or not rent a room excuse me to book a room and I think you know keep improving that kind of, of thing because as you improve that it, uh, you know your competitor across the street now they have to up the game and I think that that's just going to continually rise um, as, as we move across the market so. so some really good points number one Andrew you talked about employee retention so it's not just about the tenants who are getting the space, it's about what those tenants can do with the end user, right? So that was a great point. Um, Dennis, you bring up two points. Uh, one is, is because there is a lot of technology that's on the back end that is not marketed to the tenants and stuff like that, how do you get the old school, number one, to understand that this is still very critical to their business because things are changing. So that's the first question. Any of you guys can answer that. How do we make that these are not luxuries, these are necessities, right? And then the second question is you bring up the co-working. 
right? Again, human interaction. We are getting to a point where innovation is happening because there's cross-pollination against different industries. Because you learn from other industries. Um, actually, part of my company, that's what we do. We cross-pollinate against industries so we can do innovation. So the second question is, what is in you guys' thoughts? How are we going to move from the old model where every company has its, as they get bigger, they're in their own space, to scaling up, let's say, co-working, what co-working is today? Okay, well, the first thing, like, we run into the, the issue of, of, you know, traditional old school kind of mentality. It's very difficult to get people to invest in our type of technology, which it, admittedly is often seen as a perception technology. Like, what, mm -hmm. well, what is the value out of this? Right. What is the value out of that, you know? And, you know, we can say the same thing. You know, people, we've had clients spend $40,000 on elevator buttons that were backlit. <laughs> and right. not want to spend more money on, on technology in their space. That was a real thing that happened to us. And so they were like, oh, this is the way that we're doing it. This is what's on our blueprint. We can't change. We right. can't be flexible. And so on the back end, and I think, you know, if you can say, this is going to get you more tenants. This is going to make you more money. This is going to let you charge more per square foot. Like, if those are the things that technology that focuses on real estate that we have to, like, that's how we have to address this. You will be perceived as X, Y, Z. You will bring this value out. Operationally, you will lower your cost. And I think that the older school people will see that as, oh, okay, this is going to, it's A, save me money, or B, make me money. And the new school people are like, this is the way we need to be doing this. This is too much time that we're spending on Excel sheets that only you have on your computer. Why can't I access this? And, and stuff like that. So, I, Yeah, if I could pick up from, from there. I think... It's important to know that this is a business. You have to hit the top end, the top line and the bottom line. Right? You have to show how you can make money for a building and also how you can, you know, help like in the short term. And then longer term, you know, it's like Dennis said, like what can you do to add that value? Now when you mentioned the co-working space, I think kind of the elephant in the room is WeWork, right? It's a yeah. what, twelve billion dollar valuation or something obscene, right? And I think what WeWork has succeeded in doing, and I, and I think everyone here has alluded to it, is they've succeeded in building a community. Uh, they've given people a feeling like being at work is a positive experience. And you know, in your introduction today, you mentioned that kind of live, work, play mentality. By 20, 2020, right, which is just like right around the corner, you're at 50% of the workforce is millennials. And our demands as millennial tenants in a building are very different than the demands of the generations before us. That includes, you know, increased access to breakaway spaces, like we saw that, you know, the Centrum is putting in here, and it's a very smart move, by the way. But I think, you know, there are lots of breakaway spaces that people want to congregate, they want to cross-pollinate, as you mentioned, and I think facilitating yep. that is the job of the next wave of tech. And then, as, you know, Dennis mentioned, it's like showing, hey, look, this is making you money, yep. you know, on the, on the top and bottom line. So. So before I open up questions to the audience, I'm going to ask each of you guys to answer a question. What is, what are you crushing on in technology in terms of whether it's something right now in commercial real estate or something that you could see is going to happen in the future? But what's your, what's your kind of innovation crush? My, my, I don't know if anyone's ever asked me what my innovation crush is before. It's like, within, I feel like there's within, little like, heart emojis <laughs> like, coming out of my head right now, right? Within commercial OSA, whether it's today, whether it's something you've, you've heard about for the future, whatever it is, what are you crushing on? Sure, I love the connectivity things. I love the idea that you have beacons that sort of know who you are and what you're about. But, you know, honestly, and I, I guess it's a little bit cliche, but I think a little more holistically that you know, we talk a lot about what's B2C, right? And what's B2B, but really all of this stuff is H2H. It's human to human. Yeah. This is something that like, you know, Skyrise is an application that where we built that has my personality in it and Bradley's personality in it. And we built it for personalities. You know, we talked out in the community and we met people and we you know, took seeds from what they were looking for and we tried to plant those seeds and help them grow in our application. So I think really it's a, uh, it's not a technology crush, you know, yeah. it's, it's understanding more holistically who the people are and what we can do to better serve them. Okay. Chad? Yeah, I think I would actually expand on that. Uh, I think Andrew's exactly right. There's so much technology, you can get overwhelmed, you look around and it's amazing and the compounding effect of that technology, but ultimately is about creating that, we call them congregation spaces. So. Mm -hmm. It's really how can we put the technology in that almost the, subtly the user doesn't even realize it pushes them to have that actual experience. And it's communication in a lot of different ways, but it's got to be short and more subtle. 
Um, so that's that's really the trek. Um, I'd say that our crush, though, is all the the new ways to communicate. So from our elevators to you know di directories and like what's the newest, latest, greatest thing that we can do that no one else is doing yet. Because right. we think that will attract new tenants and um, help our tenants feel like they're in the right place. David. Yeah, my energy or my uh, my innovation crush would be. I'm kind of a competitive person. Um, one of the things I like. It's really fascinating, I think will come to, to pass fairly soon, for us at least, is the gamification of energy. So you're taking the human element, but you're also mixing in uh, the, uh, um, sorry, the, the device element, where you're interacting with all three, and you're gamifying things like energy. So you can see the real-time ticker of what your energy is doing, and you also see your neighbor's um, ticker, and, and there are incentives that are provided by people like Skyrise or, who, or whatnot, but I think tying both the human to human with a human to human to device, I think is is kind of my innovation crush. Doing all three. Cool. Uh, I would say for me, like I I have this thing with with all startups. I work with a lot of technology, and I see a lot of startups. And I think that if you can deliver eighty percent of the product, you know, the eighty twenty rule is a common thing. And I, I kind of changed it up a little bit. I say if you can deliver eighty percent of the product at twenty percent of the cost, you can change that marketplace. So like, so the things that I see that are that are coming out that are. I'm most excited by that I think, wow, that's so cool. Or, you know, there's a lot of these services, um, you know, that are competing against things like CoStar, but that are now free or, uh, you know, that are very low cost or are ways to access things that are really, that give you a lot of what that service uh, is without um, having to pay, you know, just insane amounts of money for it. Um, as a, as a like, consumer of it, I think the stuff that I actually use is things like the community-driven apps, being able to engage with buildings more. Because, like I said, as I look to expand, that's my biggest fear of it. And as we keep continue to, you know, see those types of things, like that'll make me feel much safer about going into that type of marketplace. <laughs> Any last words that you guys want to say? Okay. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. Thanks for, thanks for having us.